Hey guys, welcome to Youth Live. We're so glad to see you here. I'm Jade. I'm Sam. We've got a different night plan for you guys tonight. So get commenting in the thread below. Let us know what you're thinking, what you're thinking while the panel's up talking. But Jade, what do we got on first tonight? Um, so first, before we go into anything, we've got a quick game to play. That's it, and we're gonna throw to two of the best. So guys, today's game is design impacts theme in seven minutes. Now, Sam, do you wanna explain this a little bit more for us? Yeah, for sure. So we got seven minutes. Em's about to give us a theme to design a poster for impact. But we don't know the theme yet, so she's gonna tell us this theme right now. What is it, Em? Clean hands, pure hearts. You have seven minutes, go. What, start now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sam, what values do you have? To let, let, let the audience know, well, everyone know. For a job, apart from the internship that I'm doing at church, I build houses. So I don't actually draw anything. But I'm good with my hands, right? You'd think that it might be all right, but no. Okay, out of 10, how do you think you're going right now? A solid 2. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know what I'm doing right now. You guys are going to see this end result and be like, Jay, what was that? I'm sure my oh my gosh, up. that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't think that this should be 2021's impact promo, I don't know what should because look how much heart, huh? heart and soul has gone into this. The transition between the blue to the pink to the yellow, it just really resonates with the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us know down in the comment section who you thought um, did the best one. I think Sam just hands down. Hands down! Yeah. Well, Jade really put her heart into this one, so. Hey, mine doesn't even have a heart! <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with the theme, I just drew something pretty. So, yeah, let us know down below that um, you like Sam's the best, and um, <laughs> we'll catch you soon. Welcome to Youth Live this week. We have the awesome privilege um, of getting to worship with you guys. So it might look a little bit different, um, but it doesn't mean that our God is worthy of any less praise. So let's sing together. Oh, then. 
and a song that lasts a moment. I live a life of honest worship. If I'm missing, then I sing with purpose. All the praise, Lord, you deserve it. If I sing with everything, if I sing for you, my King, oh, I can't imagine why I would do this all for hype, cause it's all to live too high. If I sing with everything, if I sing for you, my King, oh, I can't imagine why I would do this all for high, cause it's all to lift you high, yeah. Let 
And doctors beat me down Singing the night my hope will arrive in you I'll walk through the fire and not be burned Pray in the fire and watch it turn Jesus tonight I give it all to you So as you guys might have seen on the socials this week, uh, the youth team has put together an amazing series on the YouVersion Bible app. It's a series that uh, dives into the Psalms and it's called Abiding in the Psalms. So we'd really encourage you guys to, to dive into that deep uh, with your D team leaders, with your, your youth boys or girls or whoever you're hanging out with youth uh, and your friends too, share it with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And don't forget, Sunday, 9.45, we have church online um, where we can all gather together with our families um, to dive into the word even further. So 9.45 online. That's it. Don't forget, church 9.45. But right now we're going to uh, have a listen to four absolute legends uh, that are going to sit down and share a bit about, uh, about their thoughts on church. And Jade's going to lead us in some prayer before we do that. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, um, we thank you for Crossfire. We thank you that we can all gather online um, under your word um, and still learn so much more about you um, each and every week. I pray for concentration um, and eager hearts um, as we listen to these um, four people um, talk about the um, raw feelings about the church and um, how we can be um, working together um, in, as a community and as a church um, during this time. Um, pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Hello Crossfire, thank you for tuning in, it's so good to meet with you. Uh, we are mixing things up a bit this week, making a bit of a change. So what we're doing is instead of it being Pat or I preaching or somebody else preaching by themselves, we have four of our friends uh, who have come along today and they're going to be answering some questions about church. Yeah, and if, uh, if you want kind of a more in-depth and kind of a theological look at church and particularly what it means in this COVID season, then just scroll down our YouTube page. Uh, we have one there in the Engage series just on church, just on what that looks like in this time, in this place. Uh, but for now, we're going to continue with the series, which is Everything and more. And can you give us a brief rundown of what that is? Yeah, so this series, what we've been running through is the reality that Jesus gave us everything through his death and resurrection, but God gives us even more. Um, we would be fine, we would be sweet if Jesus died on the cross and then we lived the rest of our lives in eternity with him. But instead, God decided that he would continue to bless us on this earth with different gifts. And so we've been going through those gifts in this series. And so today we're looking at church, as we mentioned before. Yeah, And we want to be vulnerable. We want to be honest. Uh, we love church. Mm -hmm. uh, we love being a part of church. Uh, but we want to be real that there are problems and there are yeah. hardships and there are times where it might not be a place or a group of people you want to yeah. be a part of. Uh, so we've got these four legends in and we're going to ask them questions and we're going to start off nice and easy uh, with a simple question thrown to you guys. Uh, what is your best memory uh, in or around church? Um, probably some of my best memories while I've been at church would have to be some of the City of Light um, album recordings. I just find them a really cool, fun experience and being able to you know, contribute to something that's really going to impact on people's lives and also just having everyone from all the different services here I think is a really cool experience. So my best memory of church was getting baptised with my friends at the end of M28 in 2015. Um, I think it's just because I became a Christian in my room by myself so I never got to have like the big community moment um, that some people get whether that's like becoming a Christian on a camp or at a conference or at church. Um, so, and I'd have, I didn't grow up in the church, so I had never really felt that sense of community or like support from the church um, until I got baptized. And I think, and I got to do it with my friends and it was just like such a fun moment. And winning tribe wars. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> That's it. 
So my best memory of church is 100% every year the impact return service. I love seeing, you know, all the campers and the leaders come back with their hearts on fire for God. And I love that church is so full that like, we have to sit in the aisles, you have to sit on the floor, we have to sit outside, like, and also everyone, like all the campers, families coming along. I just love that so much. And it's just like a continuation of camp, but like, you know how camp can sometimes feel like its own isolated little thing? It's like kind of camp in the real world. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I see it. I really like that. It's probably my baptism when I was a lot younger. I was probably 12 at the time. It was at my old church at a kiddie pool at the back, in a blow-up kiddie pool. And I don't think there weren't many people there. It was probably just my family and some other close friends in the past. But I think that's my best memory because I think that's the first time in my life that I kind of took my own faith into my hands and I made a, made a decision for myself. It wasn't my parents moving me between church and back at home or not. It was me actually making a decision for myself and what I wanted to do in life. So yeah, I think that's my best memory. That is awesome that you had that experience and I love that we get to share these moments together. Um, but we realised that there are these awesome, sweet moments of church, but there can also be really hard times and challenging times. Um, so would you mind just sharing with us maybe something that you've experienced in church that has been challenging for you? Yeah, I think church can be pretty difficult at times because in its nature, there's a lot of different individual people. And I think that's part of the beauty of the gospel that God's grace is free and it's available to everyone and anyone. And in that, we see a lot of people attracted to church from different backgrounds, different upbringings, different views, um, different maturities. And in that in itself, it can cause issues sometimes. Um, sometimes we let our sinfulness get in the way of those differences. And um, instead of you know being united in love as we're called to do in Philippians 3, we see the division caused in the church because of these differences. I think everybody, um, like something different. You know, somebody might think four songs is way too many. Somebody might think four songs isn't enough. And like a 20 minute sermon's way too long for some people, but not long enough for other people. And I think the consumerist nature of our world, I think we can let that sometimes transfer into our church. And so I think people play it off as like, oh, I'm being expectant. But I think there's a massive difference between being expectant and expecting everything to be catered to you and your needs. I think it's also difficult because not every Christian message is necessarily really uplifting and happy. And I think this is hard because like you could be going through a really great season, you're on fire for God, everything is going right for you. And you come to church and like the message is about like grief or loss or uh, not feeling God's presence. And you can kind of just sit there and be like, okay, well, I didn't get anything out of that. Ecclesiastes 3, it talks about there's a time for everything. In verse 4, it says, you know, there's a time to weep, there's a time to dance, time to mourn, a time to sing. Just because something isn't necessarily pertinent to you now, doesn't mean that you're not going to experience that sometimes in, sometime in your Christian walk. Something else that can make church really hard is you've got different people going through different seasons. You've got some people who, you know, are loving life, really enjoying it. But then you have other people who may be really struggling with things and suffering and that can sometimes um, make it hard for both parties. So what do you think church looks like when it is done well? I think it looks like a people who are vulnerable for the sake of wanting to receive grace and wanting to grow. Um, and because you can't receive grace or grow when you don't admit that there's an issue, like that you don't admit that there's sin. I also think that church looks good and feels good to people when we don't separate the teachings of Jesus with the person of Jesus. Um, I think we need to like keep his teachings true to his character um, because the gospel is just his teachings but they're all presented through his character um, and when people take the Jesus out of his own teachings then it gets really human and it gets messy so I think that's when church can make people feel uncomfortable or can make people feel judged um, is when we put too much of ourselves in it because the whole, like I come to church because I want to be more like Jesus, not more like myself. Uh, it's so good to picture and to think about church when it's at its absolute best and at its strongest. Uh, but that's not always, I guess, how everyone feels when they come to church, how everyone interacts with church. I'm not sure about you, but one of the lines I hear a lot 
from people who are maybe uh, leaving the church or have left the church is that the church is full of hypocrites. And I want to ask you guys, what would you say to someone who, who threw that line out there, who threw that thought out there, uh, that the church is full of hypocrites? Yeah, I definitely think it's something that in the church you hear a lot. And I think um, sometimes we do have hypocrites in the church. And, um, you know, as if we look at Jesus's encounter with um, the Pharisees, we see that this isn't something that he approves of. And because we're the body of Christ, we really have to make sure we're checking ourselves and checking our hearts to make sure that we aren't being hypocrites. Um, but in saying this, I think there is a misunderstanding about what being a hypocrite is. You know, sometimes as Christians, just because um, we hold a certain standard doesn't mean we're going to perfectly live up to it. And being a hypocrite doesn't necessarily mean that we have to live up to that standard at all times. I think being a hypocrite is sometimes when you um, say you live up to a certain standard, but in reality you don't. Or when um, you put a standard on other people that you are not expected to do yourself. And you know, I think as Christians we are sinful and broken people and when we sincerely acknowledge that um, it's not us being hypocrites, it's just us being true to who we are. Um, and I think you know, being vulnerable and gracious is something that we can all do better. And in doing that, I think that'll, you know, really create a good culture around church. And um, I see it as being only a culture that's going to bring more people to Christ. In Jesus's ministry, he came and called out um, hypocrites all the time. He called out the Pharisees in Matthew 23 um, about how they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And I think that's why people come to church because they realize that they can't live up to their own standards um, and they realize that we need Jesus' standards to be for us so when God looks at us he doesn't see the judgment that we put on people or how we say one thing but act another the next day um, he sees Jesus and he how full and perfect he is and how he meets every standard um, or everything that God wants for his people and Jesus meets that for us. Just like a church is full of hypocrites, like a hospital is full of sick people, a gym is full of people who want, who want to become fitter. I think it's the same concept, it's the same thing. Like we go to church because we know we need a savior and we know that we're not meeting the standards that God has for us. So we need Jesus to do it for us. Um, so we know that often, you know, there's people that experience some hardships and some hard things in church. Uh, some of that is to do with hypocrisy, um, as we just heard. But what would you say to somebody who has had a bad experience at church or perhaps is even just doubting God? What yeah. would you say to them? I think that's such a tough question because there's no real golden answer to it. But I think there's definitely some stuff maybe you should think not to do. And I think that's definitely never guilt someone into coming back to church or, you know, guilt them into coming back because I don't think if they do come back they're not going to be coming back for the right reason if you try guilt them back into it. It's more about them than it is about the church having bigger attendance. It's about their walk with Christ and I think it's important not to just cut them out of your life completely and think someone else is going to, some other Christian is going to pick them up and take them in because I think if God's put them in your life at that moment I think it's your responsibility to really work to them and try to get them back but it is a slow process getting them back and it you know it's not always perfect but Every case is different. First off, I think I'd say that I'm really sorry. I think it's such a difficult thing to go through um, and a really isolating thing at times. But sometimes I like to um, picture church as a bunch of imperfect people trying to live like our perfect God. Um, and a lot of the time the church doesn't live up to that because we are all imperfect. But 1 John 16, you know, describes that we have grace upon grace, um, not only for the people in the church who stuffed up, but like, for people who've walked away. Um, I think a really encouraging thing for people within that circumstance is that God never stops searching for us. Um, in Luke 15, it talks about, uh, Jesus tells a parable to the tax collectors who were the most hated people in the town and you know other sinners and he talks to them about how um, if he had 99 sheep and one went missing, he would leave the 99 behind to go find that one sheep. You know, God leaves the 99 for you. He leads, leaves the 99 for me. He leaves them for all of us when we've sinned and stuffed up. Um, and sometimes I think we think we've sinned too, too much or we think we're way too far gone. Um, I've definitely thought that. I've had friends that have thought that. And I had um, 
A friend of mine actually say to me recently, like, and she used the lost sheep analogy. She was like, you know, Holly, if I'm the lost sheep, like I've gone past the back paddock and I've gone all the way into another country, you know? Um, and I think what I thought of in that moment was for people who have had bad experiences with the church and walked away, like that is a really terrible thing and I'm really sorry for that, but God never stops searching for you and we'd be so happy to have you back at church with us. Thank you, I think that's so helpful to think about. Our heart breaks for people who've had those bad experiences uh, in the church and who have been hurt uh, and we wanna just extend that arm of grace uh, every chance we get and say, we'd love to have you come back here. We'd love to work on reconciling together because uh, our whole belief system is based on reconciliation. So we wanna extend that out to anyone and everyone. Um, flowing out of that, uh, even within the church, and perhaps it's one of the reasons people might fade away or might wanna leave, uh, there is a lot of opinions that go around. There's a lot of judgment sometimes within a church. Uh, what would you, what would you want to say to the people who are in the church about that issue, the people who are going regularly, who are a part of the culture and the community, who are bringing across those judgments and those opinions uh, towards others? So I would say whenever there's a sermon or a prayer or that mentions judgment, that mentions conflict in the church, the people who are sitting in the church need to stop shifting the blame. You need to realise that at one point or another, um, you were the person who passed judgment. You were the person who was the mean Christian. Um, because when we continue to shift that blame and think, oh, I'm so glad that so-and-so is preaching about this for them. Like you were that person to someone else at some point because you sin and I sin, it happens. Um, so when we stop shifting blame as Christians, we can, we allow ourselves to open up to the where we are sinning and where we are judging. And I think when we bring that to Jesus, we see he shows us how he sees us, how we are people that need grace and need mercy every single day. And when we start to see ourselves as people who need Jesus and need Jesus to look at us like that, then we will start looking at other people the exact same way. So we will start looking at people, not with judgment or with a snide comment to our friends. We will see them as people who need grace, who need mercy, but just as much as we do. Um, and I think that will really stop the sort of culture that, that people will feel afraid to be vulnerable because they'll be judged because they'll be coming to people who already recognise that they themselves need help too. Yeah. I want to say thank you guys so much. These answers have been really strong, really powerful and helpful. And I hope for you guys at, at home, uh, it's been an encouragement and helped you think about church. Uh, as we wrap up, I've, we've got one more question. Um, Church isn't always easy, we've covered that. Church can be really hard at times. Uh, it can even at times go to being painful. Um, and going to church means sometimes you miss out on things, sometimes you don't get to engage in everything you want to engage in. Uh, so to all of you, one last question. Um, why are you committed to church? With all of that in mind, why is church something that's in your calendar every week? Why, why, is, why does it have that place in your heart? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, I think Church can be difficult sometimes and it does require sacrifice, but to me, I love Jesus and this is a place where I can grow my love of God and, and share that with other people. And, you know, I believe that a place where the Bible is read and um, worship is sung, that God will do amazing things. And, you know, being a part of that is something that I really treasure and look forward to each and every week. I'm still committed to church because I am still committed to Jesus. Um, I know that Jesus had friends and people in his ministry who hurt him, like Peter hurt him, um, but he could still continue to do ministry with Peter. Jesus still um, showed Peter that grace and that mercy, even though he felt really deeply hurt. Um, and I think that's the attitude that people and that I need to continue to stay in church when I feel like people have hurt me um, and how other people hurt each other all the time. I think it's important to pass on that grace and that mercy that Jesus gives us um, and give that to our friends um, so that we can continue to serve them by 
keeping a focus on the plan, not that Jesus only has for me, but for them, which is to love them and to continue on sharing the gospel with your friends and your family and for people who don't know that. And I just think that I could not do that outside of a church. I would find it really difficult if I didn't have a community of believers to encourage me and to refine my faith and to um, really prepare me to continue to spread Jesus' gospel. I think it's, it's definitely looking back at my own life and seeing where I've come from. You know, when I was younger, I had a lot of questions about where I was going to go in life and what God's plan for me was. And I think to be in this position now when I'm, you know, a lot older than I was then, to see kids at youth, like my year seven Wolves boys, and see that they're in the same position that I am when I was their age and asking the same questions and worried about the same things. And I think to be in the position where I can guide them in a certain way from my own experiences and to try help them be better than me in the long run, I think that's really why I'm committed to church, to help those younger kids really grow up to be something better than me. There's definitely a few reasons, but I think for me, the biggest reason is I see the eternal benefit that it has. I think um, when the time comes and we're standing before the throne of God, God isn't going to be like, oh, like I saw the way you played AFL on Sundays, like that was great. Or, you know, your 99 ATAR, that was phenomenal. Or all those friends you made at parties, like that was such an achievement. Um, God's going to say either, well done, good and faithful servant, or he's going to say, I never knew you. And I think... How are you meant to get to know somebody who you don't spend time with? Um, which I think church is a massive part of. Church is really you and God, time with you and God and God's people. And like, don't get me wrong, all these things, education and sport and friends and hobbies, like they're all great things. They're all blessings from God. But when we start, I think, prioritizing or looking at blessings from God above God himself, that's where I think issues can arise. But yeah, that's, that's why I keep persisting with church because I see the eternal benefit, I think. Cool, that's awesome, that's it. Well, thank you for tuning in Crossfire. We hope these questions and these answers have been really helpful for you as you think about church. Uh, I just wanna finish with a passage as we wrap this section up. Uh, this is from 1 Peter 2, verse nine. Uh, and it says this, you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. As we wrestle with the questions of church and uh, the issues and the struggles uh, around church, but also the benefits and the joys and the fun times we have at church, uh, I just want to encourage you, if you've had a bad experience of church, if you've been hurt, uh, we want to show you love and we want to welcome you and we want to bring you back into our community and show you that you belong here. Uh, if you've had an amazing time in a community at church your whole life, then I want to say enjoy that and bring others into that community as well. Uh, because God's heart for His church is that it would look like Him and would represent Him to the world. Uh, we get to come together, honour God, praise God, celebrate Him and be His people. And that offers there for all people who want to take it up. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, we hope it's been helpful. We hope it's encouraged you uh, not only to join us while we're online in church, but when we meet face to face again, to be there week in, week out, not just on youth on a Friday, but on Sundays as well. We'd love to see you there.
pursue me Lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all So beautiful Here in you I find shelter Captivated by your splendor of your face It's my secret place I'm wide awake I'm drawing close by grace And all my heart is yours All fear removed I breathe you in I lean into your love So there's stuff coming out during the middle of the week. Uh, there's an extra sermon tomorrow that's coming out on Instagram. But before you're going to watch the sermon, you guys need to jump on and follow all the stuff on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Make sure you're keeping up with all the socials. And we're going to love to see you on Sunday at 9.45 for 10 a.m. church. We'll see you guys then. Bye! Bye. Bye.